Hi there. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for August 23rd of 2024. Thank you all for being here today. And if you are here live, um, please do drop your questions in the questions tab. And if you are not able to attend live and you're watching the recording, you're always welcome to join us live. Simply sign up for a newsletter at twistedsage.com and we will send out the invitation to the 50 Questions Friday as well as our new tool of the week. So we will go ahead and jump into the heart space here this morning. So if you'd like to join me, we're just closing our eyes, putting our attention to the physical heart where you find your light. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Second, connecting with you as creator God, as soul, breathing in that light of you into the heart. And that third breath in this Trinity breath is where we breathe in the energy of creation, the energy of the earth. We bring them both together within you and they expand right back out. So you become this column of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart space. Hey, everybody. Hey, good morning, Connie from Maine. Hey, Samson. Good to see you here this morning. Hey, Ray. Happy to see you here from Virginia. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, we will get started here with some of the questions from the internet first, and then we'll jump here to questions on live. All right. So let's see. I have one question. Um, I have a pair of highest potentials and grounding practitioner rings that I love to sleep inside at night. I'm considering completing the trio by getting a no space ring. I already have a no space pendant that I wear almost all the time. So would there be a big difference in the energy between the rings and the pendant? So, you know, sleeping within those, the practitioner rings, um, for one, the practitioner rings, because they are that thicker gauge, they're, they're more potent. And what I mean by potent is that they're perceived more on the physical. Um, but truly the energetic of your nothing space pendant, I don't have one, but it's like uh, the size of a generator, this size that's collapsed that you wear as a pendant. Now, that field of the pendant and the field of the practitioner ring are exactly the same field, the same energetic. Um, it's just that the practitioner ring, again, is a little bit more potent. Now, I would suggest... For me, I would simply stick with what you have. I would hang your nothing space pendant in those practitioner rings because those practitioner rings are going to pick up this energy and that's going to bring it through for you as well. Um, if you are really loving that nothing space ring, um, there's a lot of people who use that nothing space practitioner ring if they're having a difficult time, um, if they're just you know, kind of lost in a space, basically when, it, or if there's a lot of chaos going on. So that nothing space practitioner ring is a fantastic one to use. If you just kind of need to step aside from what's going on to get a reprieve from things. Um, so, you know, that's, you don't necessarily need of another practitioner ring because you can certainly just add that pendant into that nothing space. But if you ever feel like you need that nothing space ring just as a support, as a space, because it's it's the zero point space. It's a space of nothing yet everything. And you can truly just tune into your pendant and be in that space. But if you are with a lot of the tools, you know, when you tune into them, that's where the magic is. But if you're not able to really jump into the heart space at the time and you're not able to tune into the subtle energy fields, the practitioner rings are a beneficial one because they are more potent. So anyway, long-winded answer. Hopefully that answers the question all the way through. Um, and we have one other quick question from the internet. 
Oh, actually, two questions here in one. Um, can we work with the wisdom wand to receive to receive guidance from higher self? Most certainly. So the wisdom wand. Um, the wisdom wand, that is really the magic of this tool, is that it is connecting to the higher self. Yes, it is connecting with all that you are truly. It is connecting with all of your lifetimes, the soul aspects, the traumas through lifetimes. It is connecting with the soul. The beautiful thing about the wisdom energetics is, is that after when in this, this field just simply helps you to release those energies easier because a lot of those energies stick within, they manifest as physical, mental, emotional life situation things. That is what patterns your reality. And so as we begin to release these things, these tools are simply here to help release with a lot more quickness, grace, and ease. Um, and part of that is just the knowing of what the heck is going on. But the tools provide a beautiful space for that. So can you use the wisdom wand to better connect with your higher self? Even better is the point of the story is, is that as we release all of these old traumas and experiences, as we release those back to soul as wisdom, there is a new light body that is created. Now, this light body is more, it's much cooler than working with the soul or any of these other parts of the soul because this new light body is the culmination of the wisdom of lifetimes. So as you integrate that experience as you clear and release that trauma this is what creates this new light body and so this unlike your soul who does not understand truly the human experience and what it's like to be human you know i've laid on the floor dying and you know my soul just stands there oh, you're gonna be okay you know but yet this new light body which we call the master the master you because it has the wisdom of the lifetimes. It understands all aspects of being human, all the experiences. And so the wisdom wand is helping you to create and connect with that master you, that light body that is made up of the wisdom of lifetimes and the soul. So anyway, another long-winded answer, but man, I just really have to share the profundity of working with these other parts of you. Um, second question, does the large wisdom wand put out more energy than the smaller sizes? Would, would this be more suitable for those who aren't as energy sensitive? Yes. Kind of the back to the same concept as our last question about using a pendant size versus a practitioner ring. And that's a very similar with the wisdom wand and the wisdom wand pendants. The wisdom wand pendants are great if you are able to truly stop and feel into the energies, um, you know, and, and that's, that's the thing too, is that a lot of the times when you are in the thick of things, um, of the, of the traumas, the, the old energies, the everything coming through, it is hard to really stop sometimes and be present and in the heart space. So that's really where this, heavier gauge, the full size wisdom wand is truly what I suggest for doing the work. Um, because it is a lot more tangible on the physical. Um, but yet again, the pendant and this are the exact same energetic. And if you can tune into the pendant, that's a great way to go, but I still love to carry the full size wisdom wand. Um, it's one tool that we still offer the buy two, get one free on the website, which basically puts it below our cost. But we want to see these out in the world um, because the wisdom fields are have been very beneficial to us and others that we know. And it doesn't have to be the wands, just any of the wisdom fields. And it doesn't even have to be the tools, just actually going through any of the meditations that we do with the wisdom energetics you don't actually need the tool in that meditation because you, you access that field. Um, all right. So I'm going to come back here and do some more check-ins. 
Hey, Kat, Ellen. Hey, Nat. Good to see you here today. Thanks for being here. Renard, much love, man. Malit. Oh, I'm so glad you made it here today, too. Man, you guys are awesome. We have some really great peeps that show up here. <laughs> and the conversations that ensue all right so we'll move on with some other questions here all right so kirk's asking a question using the practitioner rings for sleeping what's the range of the produced energy when the rings are positioned on the wall so the rings have the potential of going for miles um innately this column of light that comes out of the ring um the older energies that were more in this physical plane like the 144 megahertz the things that slim worked with um those ones had a larger sphere of influence on this plane those energies would extend a lot farther in this physical plane but as we work with these higher consciousness tools it's not that they expand farther in this physical. It's more about what they do here, um, those higher connections. So, but still with the, the newer practitioner rings, they're still going to extend for miles. Um, so basically with, with that ring, to me, I see that and I'm just looking at it just right now, it seems as if you are closer to the ring, and especially in this epicenter is where that big, huge sheet of magic is, is it's like that bubble film. So right here in the epicenter is the most potent part. And then it's like that expands out. To me, it looks like if you are closer to that ring, so with the practitioner ring, I would say to be within five feet of it would be, you, you know, five feet or less, would be your most potent part of being in that field, but it's still going to affect things for miles. Um, it's just that the field kind of tapers out, um, well, fizzles out <laughs> as it goes out. Um, when you when you have the rings on the floor under the bed and the bed is a box spring with spring mattress, do these springs interfere with the energy? No. And that's the thing too, is that the tensor fields are a quantum field in that they are not disrupted by anything physical or energetic. And so with the, with your box springs, having the practitioner ring under the bed is perfectly acceptable. Now, the thing with the practitioner rings is that I do like to sleep with them so that I'm within that whole column. So my whole body is within that column of light. If you put the practitioner ring or even a small ring under your bed, it's still going to intersect because the, the column of light is the size of the ring. That column of light, even if you use a small ring, this one here is the healing hands. You can place this one under the bed and it'll intersect in your energy field. And it's kind of like wearing a ring or carrying in a pocket or a pendant. It is working throughout your entire field. So even a small ring is a beneficial one to place under the bed or at the headboard. But to me, preferred practitioner rings, headboard, sleeping with the entire column, like you're in a light chamber. Um, let's see, jump over here to questions linda is the ring in the beta coil the same as the original the ring in the beta coil the same as the original coils now the the beta ring now i'm not to interpret your question there the beta ring um is very specifically made for the beta coils and yes it is always updated um so the beta coil ring it still you know, it has the energetics of the light bangles. It has the energetics, which is more of that grounding the mind to the earth. It also has that expansive light energy. Oh boy, you guys, expansive light energy is phenomenal. But that expansive light energy is also within here. So the Beta Coil ring is, is being updated as we go through, and that updates all of the beta coil rings so yep if you have one of the originals it is still receiving those updates to the etheric templates as we update the rings these are updated as well um could you create a communication portal 
to ancestors with the beta coil. Well, I get that as a big yes, Renard. Whew. Yep. So you can do even better than communicating with the ancestors is you can bring your light to the ancestors. Um, one of the things that we've seen well, that we've done for like our family tree, our family lineage. Um, and this is something you can check out. And I think we have the meditation somewhere out there on YouTube. It's probably part of our, one of our other larger uh, productions, but basically when you sit with your family tree, imagine that tree and then imagine each of the beings as a point of light on this tree. Once you see all of these lights, which are your ancestors, go in and dissolve the tree. Hold your light for each of these beings to release, to clear, to bring into completion. Um, you know, and it, it, again, it's not the details of intention of doing these things. It's simply more about bringing your light and your awareness to these points of light. And I, yeah, using that beta coil is a perfect way to, to imagine bringing a point of light or your ancestors and having them connected. Um, and I tell you what, that does some amazing, amazing things. It, it is clearing all of the old uh, oaths, vows, promises, the vows of poverty, the old traumas that are handed down. Some people even have diseases named after their family because <laughs> it's just the old crap. You can release that stuff. I mean, um, as far as, and I'm sorry that I laughed there, but it's just the whole concept that's how these things can, can be passed down and affect us through the ancestral lineage. Um, so... I apologize if anybody has a disease named after their family. <laughs> I would love to hold space for you to assist in the release of that. Um, thanks for that question, Bernard. Great stuff. What is the effect when we combine the beta coils with the quantum grid points? Um, you know, and we talked about that yesterday. And what... So we did a uh, beta coil tool of the week webinar yesterday, um, which that is on YouTube right now. So you're welcome to check that out. Uh, we did some Q and A and talked about the beta coils um, on that video yesterday, but we talked about putting that quantum grid point on there and how it just expands it more. But then our friend Renard brought up the whole concept of what he did and holy smokes, um, taking the beta coil, put in the quantum grid point, little pyramid, Putting the highest potentials tensor field generator on top of the pyramid because these generators and pyramids holy smokes they are broadcasters it works synergizes very well and then he also put the new expansive light bangle around the whole thing with the quantum grid point and wow that is a potent powerful setup um so yeah, I do suggest the, the highest potentials are a great one to go with any of the pyramids, the grid points, because it does create a, a super expansive field as well. Um, but yeah, those together are pretty amazing. Um, let's see. All right. Um, and I was trying to think if there was any other, any announcements. Uh, we're going to be doing a tool of the week again next week. So Look for an email coming out on um, Sunday or early Monday, and we'll be announcing next week's um, tool of the week. And that webinar should be pretty amazing. So um, I guess I'll give you a heads up. We're going to do the expansive light bangles. So the expansive light bangles is going to be our tool of the week next week. They're not going to go on sale until Wednesday. Um, but these are one of the most amazing tools, um, energies that has been very beneficial in this time of transformation, integration, and all of that good stuff. All right. So I was just seeing if there was any other questions here. Um, we don't have any other questions, but... 
I was trying to think if there's anything else to share. No, we're going to be doing, um, I'm going to be doing some video blogs, just doing simple things like how to feel energy, um, different things like that throughout the time here. We're going to start doing more YouTube live stuff. This uh, live storm, we're going to stick with this live storm platform until for another three weeks and then our subscription's done. And then we're going to be moving to YouTube live for our 50 questions Fridays. Um, and other than that, I guess I have nothing else. Do you guys have any other things you want to share with anybody else that's out here or questions? Um, you know, I just started, this is like the first week that I've kind of been back. I feel like I've been <laughs> not present here fully for quite some time. Um, like I've been telling all my friends, I feel like I'm just coming back home to this plane again, finally, because I feel like I've just, it's just been an autopilot thing here for, I don't know, gosh, a long time. And so it is good to be coming back into presence and, um, thank you all for being here and your support, uh, with Twisted Sage and for just being present here. Um, let's see anything else. Oh yeah. If you guys are still interested in the affiliate thing, please do check out the whole affiliate program that we have. Um, it's under about us on twisted sage because you can sign up and you can get an affiliate link where basically you share this link with others. And if others make a tool purchase within 90 days, you get uh, a commission from that. And so that's really what we're asking our, our big supporters of Twisted Sage to, to perhaps sign up for the affiliate. So that way um, we can, it, it's a win-win-win thing. So that we have a lot of people who are passionate about the tools and sharing with others anyway. So we just want to give you the opportunity to receive a commission from being, from sharing. And then plus that just helps to get us out there into the world more. So that is something that um i wanted to bring up just to make sure everybody knew about the affiliate program so please do check that out if you wish um some passive income for you all right going back we have another question uh what tool is recommended for the release of deep guilt <sighs> maybe a self-love is acceptance okay the release in deep guilt is the hopono ono what you do is the Ho'opono Ono is the four stanzas. Um, you stand in front of the mirror and you look yourself in the eyes and you find that aspect of you that carries this guilt. Because, you know, these parts of us are like an aspect. It could be like the wounded inner child. It could be... Um, another lifetime. It could be the culmination of lifetimes, whatever this experience is that you carry the guilt for the radical acceptance is part of that self-love. And so the Ho'opono Ono helps us step into the radical acceptance of self because we have that self forgiveness. So you have to forgive yourself first and whatever all that is before you can step into the self-love. So that is part of the radical acceptance of self, the self-love, which allows you to be more present in the moment as a creator, um, all tied together. So look up the Ho'opono Ono. Um, you know, again, the four stanzas, you look yourself in the eyes, you say the stanza, you feel it deeply. Then you do the next one feel it deeply and doesn't matter the time that it takes you, but do that until, um, you know, do it over and over again with whatever comes up next. It may be another little sliver of, of your guilt, your shame or whatever this is. Um, so just do it until you feel like it's not there. Um, and just that radical acceptance of self, so yeah, that's the releasing of that deep guilt. 
Um, do you have any suggestions for rings for a nonverbal three-year-old? Um, so I think of something good for, um, yeah, because anybody below three, you don't want to give them any of the copper tools because you can get too much copper orally ingested. So, you know, as long as your three-year-old is going to keep it, um, out of their mouth, then, cause I was trying to remember my daughter at three, if she was still putting things in her mouth or not, I think she was. Um, but basically what I would suggest is the, um, the fidget generator that nothing space energy, um, either the fidget generator or the highest potentials generator, because the generators are something that can sit near them or they can be playing with like the fidget one, the fidget one, this tensor field generator, the highest potentials covers about, you know, a large home, a quarter, a quarter of a block approximately. And so this is a fantastic one to just sit in the space and have it near, put it in with their, their bag if they go to daycare or anything. Um, and then, you know, so this is one option that just is always in the field. The other one, it, the other thought is that nothing space, which is that fidget generator, the nothing space is the energetic, um, that the nothing space, the fidget generator is actually great for the kids who have the sensory issues, um, uh, you know, because it helps to kind of bring them into their own bubble so that they don't have a lot of that extra sensory stuff causing um, that chaos within them. So, yeah, I would say, you know, usually for toddlers, smaller kids, we suggest a tensor field generator versus, you know, like a pendant or anything, obviously. Um, so the tensor field generators, again, the highest potentials and or that fidget generator that they can play with and have it near them. Um, so yeah, and these kids today are so flipping special and magical. Oh my God. They are, some of them are coming in with, uh, I truly believe some of them are coming in with a lot more remembrance than what any of us have right now. And, um, yeah. And so if you remember that, it, uh, if you remember all that you are, it's a little bit tougher to come here into this density. So we definitely need to give those kids some support so that they can stick around in this density for a while and enjoy life. All right, you guys, I guess that's it for the day. So th thanks again for being here and yeah, we'll definitely see you guys sometime soon. And yeah, much love, you guys. Thank you. All right. Take care. Enjoy the week.